So yeah, so Satan, um, how old were you in this photo here? I think just turned 22. Yeah, and what, what did you graduate from? Because this is not, you're waiting for your graduation for physio. So what did you graduate from this one? Uh, that picture was taken after graduating with the Bachelor of Health Sciences. Oh yeah, and that was with which uni? Uh, Sydney Uni. Oh yeah, that's good to know because uh, you know, many people do your degree that you just finished your master's from different backgrounds. So some like yourself with the health sciences, some from overseas degrees. Uh, so that will be good context to know um, on how you, you know, congrats, got through the two years here with the master's. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll get to the to the crux of it. So. Um, no, why, why did you choose to do physio in the first place? Like, was it something that you decided kind of at this point in the photo where you're like 21, 22 and thinking what's next? Or did you have it way before? Yeah, tell me. Oh, that's quite a big story as well. Um, yeah, go for it. We've got time. We've got like two hours. Um, up to, we, we can go to two hours. We don't have to. <laughs> I would say it probably began maybe when I was 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. During that time, I was like, I, I wanted to help people in a health area. So I guess the typical Asian pathway was like, oh, you have to become a doctor to do that, right? Yep. So then was thinking along those lines, but then I ended up having a talk with my local GP and I saw how much time he'd have to sacrifice to pursue his career pathway and the things that he'd have to kind of put onto the side. So that's time with his family, his hobby times, all of those things would have to be put almost almost second to his work mm. at least that's how he communicated it to me okay so he told you this so it yeah, wasn't you observing he told you this or he or she yeah. i'm just assuming okay cool yeah, mm. uh yeah so he was saying along those lines and i saw that that lifestyle didn't really appeal to me so i was looking around and later on i think that same year or one year after my grandfather got hospitalized MDT started to look after him. So your regular multidisciplinary team, your OTs, your physios, your specialized doctors. Um, and I found that the physio made the largest difference to his quality of life. And at that point, I thought that was very powerful and I wanted to be part of that. It seemed very special to me and I wanted to go down that pathway. So that's the main, I guess, reason why I chose to go through with physio. Right. And you're saying this all happened around 14, 15? Yeah, fourteen, fifteen. Wow. So, so yeah, just... yeah, wow. That that would have been uh, very challenging, you know, as a teenager going through all that. Um, and but then it looks like it sparked your interest in the uh, path where you've gone now. Uh, so was this kind of what you were like? Let's let's start from even from high school. So I think you tossed up um, medicine there in a second, but. Uh, by the time you got to year 12, I'm assuming you uh, grew up in um, Sydney here and uh, did schooling here. Um, in year 12, were you kind of going, yep, I'm going to go for physiotherapy and you know, get the ATAR for it? Yeah, uh, right at the end, like let's say towards HSC time, I was still thinking physiotherapy, but then there was other opportunities like I was also looking considering biotechnology or other areas in science, they also quite appeal to me, but then uh, I guess chat with mom kind of shut that down because it's like there's not enough funding in those areas and you have to be very, uh, I guess, persistent to make that work. You kind of can't just, let's say, put your eyes on just Sydney or Australia. You'd have to maybe even consider going overseas to make that career pathway viable. Possibly. So, mm. Yeah, still decided to go around the health area and that field, I mean, health science decided I decided that was a good starting place as well to start off with just to work out what options or what pathways there are ahead of me and take that pathway along. Hmm. I'll, I'll tell you later if we've got time, but um, my, my um, journey around the year 12 time kind of sounds like yours. I, I never actually had the type of experience you've had with the profession. Um, before I chose the degree, but um, how I kind of thought things through um, were quite similar. Um, but yeah, we'll go from there. Um, what subjects did you do, by the way, for your year 12? Because that, that's really helpful knowing what foundational yeah. knowledge you've had as you went to the next couple of degrees. Yep. So I always make this joke with my high school. Like, all the mm -hmm. units I did basically have nothing to do with physio. Yeah, so do it. Got, tell me. Tell me about it. Yeah. So we've got uh, 
maths two unit, English advanced, physics, chemistry, music, um, and software design development. Okay, what makes you think that it has nothing to do with physio? Because I uh, did similar subjects, and I would say some of those would. Yeah. So, I mean, some of them do, but like the software design development and the music, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they just kind of personal interests and they never really, I guess, came to effect later on into uni. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went down those. Um, yeah, I mean, those were general interests and kind of built off those ones. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I, I did I did, I did some similar subjects. I did uh, I did software design as well, um, but I did it accelerated. So meaning I did it in year nine and ten. Um, yeah, I was a nerd. Yeah, um, <laughs> I did drama actually, um, which actually might explain why I do crazy stuff like streaming now. But um, uh, what else? Um, I did do two unit maths too. I did physics, chemistry, and bio. So and I often say that's like the. Uh, the, the typical Asian pick, or actually no, the typical Asian pick would be doing um, economics instead of biology. But um, yeah, anyway. But I, I actually would say that um, those will actually fit, with, like like maths. Uh, we'll, we'll get to there. But like, um, I'll ask you questions along the lines of you know, where did all these pieces fit together as you try to do physio. Um, cool. And and run me through. Um, so we got a, an idea of what you've done in high school, um, and then give us a run through of. Um, what the bachelors of health sciences at sydney uni gave you because um there will be different people um going into the masters you might remember friends or colleagues that did kinesiology uh, or exercise sports science so um they will have different um foundational knowledge going into the physio course so what what did it, what did it um have in the bachelors of health for you okay i would say the most important skill that it developed within me was the ability to critically think, not take everything at face value. That was probably the most important skill that I got from it. So if some person of authority or a specialist in the field tells you something, don't just take that as tried and true. Always do your own research, test that against it, see if it's see if what they said is true or not. That was the most important lesson I learned during my undergrad and being able to appraise, look through literature, construct good arguments, be able to understand where someone's coming from in what they're saying or what they've tried to structure and talk about. So getting that deeper understanding and not just kind of being a sheep in the herd and just following whatever they say, that was probably the most important thing in the Bachelor of Health Sciences. Yeah. You're also like, mm. oh, sorry. I was going to say, uh, one, uh, that's an amazing thing you learned. I wish... Um... Everyone learned that in their degrees, um, and that's something that we try to get people to do. How, how did the um, uh, bachelors of health do that? Like, how did that? What 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 did it have in that course that actually made you think that, or was it something that you bubbled up as you were just going through it? Uh, I would say a bit of combination of both. So they give a lot of different assessments or tasks where you'd either look at. Uh, biological aspects of health, so your hard sciences, your psychological aspects, and your sociological issues. Mm -hmm. So they would give you tasks to kind of think deeper about what's what's the current situation like in, like, let's say, healthcare sense. How does it stack up to other healthcare systems, be it overseas, international? What have we got that they don't have? Mm. What do we have that potential strengths compared to theirs and potential weaknesses? And see why why do those exist? Um, and what's the potential source of them? So looking at it at a po like a policy level, yep. what's causing these um, imbalances? Is it socioeconomic status? Is it other intricacies that lie there? Or is it something that's kind of insidious? Is it something that perhaps was overlooked when it was created? So those aspects, uh, health science really taught me to kind of try to go through with a fine tooth comb. Don't, don't just like... Um, yeah, accept what kind of policies are in place and try to trace where they came from and why they exist okay. and see how does that influence the healthcare system. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so you're about to say something else about your undergraduate degree. Um, do you still remember it? I cut you off earlier. Uh, I'm just trying to think. It might come back to me, not yeah. too sure. <laughs> all good, all good. All right, so now you, you, you that was a three-year degree, wasn't it, that undergraduate 
Bachelor of Health Sciences, yep. and then you went straight into uh, the Masters. Did you, by the way, major in movement sciences? Is that uh, what yep, you did? Yep, that's spot on. Yeah. Um, I've done the um, assessments before of uh, who goes uh, through from undergraduates to our master's program so yeah there's different different pathways that the uni has written um which if you do a health science um degree in um university of sydney uh obviously they recommend you do the movement sciences because it makes a lot of sense for that mm. to then get you into physiotherapy um so as you transitioned and as you were going through the units um what was helpful uh, besides the critical thinking, which definitely was would be helpful for any physiotherapist? What else was helpful in that early degree um, in getting you started with the graduate program? Probably a lot of assessments based on like group work. So kind of that leadership role and being able to try to get everyone on the same page and being able to like communicate that, you know, everyone has other things going on in their life and it's not just uni, they've got other commitments uh, they've got work, they've got their family, hmm. potential relationships that exist outside, hobbies, sports, and try to work out a fine balance between everyone and keep everyone on task. That was also very important within the undergrad. There was just a lot of group work assessments. And also, like uh, I guess, public presentations within hmm. classroom settings. That's also developed confidence in being able to present in front of an audience and being able to articulate complex ideas and break it down to so ways to ways that a large amount of people can understand them. Yeah. No, yeah, that's that's really, really good. Uh, and yes, there are definitely some group assignments and you're just working with each other all the time. I mean, you, when you're practicing in physio, you got to practice on somebody. So all yeah. these little soft thing, soft skills um, occur. Uh, you did mention that people often work during the masters. Um, did you work during undergrad or masters yourself? I didn't work. I didn't work like part-time or full-time, so I was, I guess, blessed in that sense. Mm. So I could focus a bit more on studies. Yeah. I'd only work every once in a blue moon when uh, at a local gym, the personal trainer, if you needed a hand for like uh, either just small talk with the other patients or if someone was doing really bad form with lifting to try to help them out there or if they're a complete newbie, that was yep. probably the extent of my experience. Okay. Yeah. How did you get that gig? Uh, so the person or the personal trainer that worked at the gym was one of my mom's clients. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I worked out nicely through that way. Yeah. It's how networking works. So, yep. uh, no, great because that, that type of job, um, actually, uh, from my perspective, probably fits in quite well with what you were studying, which is physiotherapy. So, um, yeah, other people, the typical jobs that people often do, um, if they want to be kind of in the physiotherapy spaces, either they kind of uh, do the admin work in a physio clinic or they perhaps do sports coverage with a sports physio um, or they do some sort of shadowing. Um, but yeah, your example here is actually quite good, even though you said you didn't do that often. Um, that's uh, no, that, that would have been a valuable experience. Um, but yes, this also, I guess, like you said, you were lucky or blessed that... Um, you didn't have to kind of mm. do a part-time job as you went through, which we do know a lot of graduate students do, and it's quite a lot of things to juggle. Um, yeah. They're probably working right now while it's in this, um, the break, and maybe they get to see this video later when it's posted instead on fast forward or something because I talk so slow. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, yeah. So... Give us a rundown on um, what was it like in your first semester? Because I've talked to many students before and they've got varying experiences on how easy or hard they felt it. How, how did that, how did the first semester feel like for you? If you remember it, that is, it's probably about a couple couple of semesters ago now. Uh, under In the undergrad program or the master's? Uh, we'll go straight into the master's. We're going to go into physio talk now, full physio. Okay. I would say the pacing of it was very very fast because they're trying to or whether i saw it was kind of like there's a ton of content and you need to get through all of it on this time schedule so it just felt very not rushed but just well, there was a large amount of pressure to kind of absorb information at a very fast rate compared mm -hmm. to at a bachelor level undergrad level yep and did you feel like 
a lot of your colleagues felt the same as well like if you had 100%. to say were you on the top of the would you would you find did you feel yourself to be more on the i'm coping a bit more side or smack bang in the middle or kind of oh gosh don't know if i can make it through type of level in the cohort where were you i would say kind of smack bang in the middle there was times okay. where like there was more concepts thrown at us and i felt that they were kind of brand new and i had to wrap my head around it and there was mm. other things where like oh yeah i've heard that before and i can kind of tie that in a bit easier yeah and this is helpful for me as you know an educator because um as you basically enrolled in a program as you as it clearly states there are assumed knowledge based on what units you do that's why we go back to our previous topic about doing the health sciences with a movement science major mm-hmm. um were there any things that you got an impression where, oh, this is assumed, but I actually honestly don't remember it, <laughs> or <laughs> oh no, I don't think I ever got taught it, which is often the first thought, <laughs> rather than I don't remember it. Oh yeah, uh, I'm just trying to think. Maybe some elements of maybe anatomy, because okay. also during the undergrad program, the anatomy was quite rushed, so like there was still holes in like my understanding of how anatomy worked. There's, you learn about your origins, insertions, attachments, functions, and all that, but mm-hmm. there still comes a point where like, oh, I can't quite remember that that smaller muscle group did, or how does that work or tie in with other structures? Oh yeah, that plantaris kind of exists. Yeah. What about palmaris longus? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> how many percent of people don't have it? Anyway, um, fair enough, yeah. Because the other thing to consider is that um, you would have learned anatomy first year of your undergrad, is that right? The very first uh, year? I think it was in second year. Second year, okay. Second year, So yeah. you still at least had a two-year gap at the minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah, it's different. So when I did the undergraduate program, so first year you have the anatomy, second year you get into similar courses like you just did in your first year, first sem. So technically it should be more fresh. Mm-hmm. And... Um, yeah, hopefully there's not as much forgetting. And um, and when you remember the anatomy, it obviously makes particularly musculoskeletal um, mm. techniques uh, much easier to learn as well. Uh, but I, I do agree. Um, it I, even as the undergraduate, f- uh, felt that anatomy is a lot. And anatomy is a lot. Like, there is so many bones and muscles and everything. Um, so to even try to learn it all in a year technically doesn't do it, um, do it just like, and this is not bagging out the system. This is just the topic itself is huge and we just got to respect yeah. that. Um, and there's always more to know, like when you graduate, you, you, I need to, I think we all need to revise it, uh, frequently, um, because there's always more to learn and, uh, the more, you know, it, it makes it easier to do the physio work. So Fair enough. Um, so, anything else besides the anatomy? That was the, that was the question. So, what what was assumed that you felt like, oh, didn't quite know or didn't quite felt I was confident or competent even in? Was there anything else? Mm, just trying to think back. First year, I'd still put it down to yeah, the anatomy. Mm. <laughs> I'd still put it down because that's the bread and butter of every physiotherapist. I feel like it and, is. If you've got that under your belt, then the time's going to be much, I guess, not much more straightforward, but you can focus more time on more concepts rather Mm. than like worrying about anatomy. Yeah. Yeah. So anyone who's uh, thinking of getting into graduate physio, somehow stumbling across this, or um, perhaps you are currently a first year gem and you realize something similar um, feelings, then yeah, pick up that anatomy textbook or there's some pretty good websites these days um, that you can actually learn anatomy off and uh, or if you can, find your old course notes. Um, but that said, um, not all anatomy courses I've kind of reviewed um, go through the biomechanics stuff. Um, I think yours did, didn't it, Seaton? Is that right? It went through biomechanics? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, I don't think all anatomy courses do that. Um, and I think it is really helpful because I think that's a, I mean, we can get to that in a second, but I think that's a topic I often hear students say they're really having trouble with, um, especially if they've never done maths or physics before. Um, 
which is why we, if we go back to our high school subjects, <laughs> that's why I mm. thought if you did math and you did physics, you might not have noticed it, but um, from an educator point of view, um, I can see the differences when someone who has done those subjects and how they can pick up the biomechanics versus someone who hasn't. Um, and they can pick it up, it just requires more effort and uh, kind of a respectful understanding that, yep, got to get into it as soon as you can. Um, cool. So then that was first um, year, first semester. Remind me on what subjects you do. So uh, we can do as a teamwork, but I remember you have foundations kind of or A or B, which kind of look at um, all sorts of different assessments. Um, then yeah. you also had two other subjects, right? I'll let you answer. Yep. Yeah, what were those? Uh, so like you said, first one was like MS1, MS1B. So mm -hmm. one looks at your, like, if you were in a private practice, how would you assess a patient? So your subjective taking, your objective taking, mm -hmm. your assessments, your treatments. Uh, MS1B was more doing more objective taking. So knowing how to use a GONI, how would you properly uh, position the patient to get a right measurement, that type of stuff. And the other two was your cardio, uh, which looked at more like your ACBT, your PEP, mm -hmm. uh, patient positioning, your contraindications, precautions to all kinds of different diseases and how mm -hmm. that may influence your management treatment. And the last one was neuro. So that was more like your some degenerative-based changes, uh, so your stroke, your Parkinson's, those type of areas of expertise. It's great that you remember all this. <laughs> Even <laughs> as an educator, I mean, because I taught uh, MS1 A and B this year as well. Obviously, that's fresh, um, and I don't teach those other two units. But to to know that you've you know probably is two years ago now at the very least uh, since you did it um, to still remember quite clearly um, is really really good. Uh, so you kind of went through kind of the you know the, the main struggles, which is anatomy. Um, is there anything else um, in semester one that you you know if you were to talk to uh, you know, Seton two years ago, uh, besides, you know, studied anatomy before you started the um, the course, what what else could you tell young Seton? The one that looks like a picture I have on my screen. Stick to, like, master the basics. Don't worry about, like, all these fancy type, like, treatments and all the little finer bells and whistles that will come. Focus on your basics understanding, and that will serve you really, really well going forwards. So okay. when you're doing your prax in physio, in your undergrad, or even in your master's, um, knowing that like this is the structure that I would like logically get the information from the patient and how to treat them properly, and kind of trusting that trusting in the process and knowing that what you're doing is fine. You don't need to do some crazy thing that try to impress the marker or anything like that. Focus on the basics and nail that. I would say that would probably be my biggest advice. Great. Two years ago. Mm. And uh, oh yeah, this has been a bit subtle in the early parts of conversation, but something that you might not have noticed that you have um, have in your belt as you started is that you actually have seen physios work in your face. Um, when you were saying when you were 14, 15 years old, you actually know exactly how they do things. You didn't only see them on a TV screen. That's, that was my experience. I only saw the sports physio run into the Australian Open and that was my impression of physiotherapy and maybe do some massage in the clinic. And that was, that was my impression. Um, but I think you had that benefit of kind of knowing, like when you learn these skills, uh, what it looks like in real practice because you've been there um, personally yourself so we'll go to second year i can't even remember, remember exactly oh no i do how was second year second oh, sorry year. not second year second semester man second i wish semester. it was second year that quick <laughs> yeah uh second semester i'd say that was I kind of understood the pacing that what to expect a little bit more of the course so how fast content will kind of be thrown at you what kind of um deadlines roughly speaking, you are supposed to meet during every semester. So trying to balance that in with your own personal life and trying to strike a balance, being like making sure that you have enough sleep, making sure that you're still doing the hobbies and other tasks that you enjoy doing day to day. So trying to really narrow in and still have that work-life balance. I would say that was more established in the second semester for me. Mm. Um, so did yeah. you, you said that you kind of got an understanding of the pacing. So would you say that the pacing was similar as first semester, but you were just more ready for it? Or would you say yeah. that it was faster than first semester or? 
I would say it's probably similar pace, but okay. it's just that I grew with the like I knew what to expect a bit more going in, so it didn't kind of catch me off guard as much. Yep. And give me a run through of what what are the key things you've learned. So in other words, maybe what the four subjects were, and um, yeah, we can go from there. What what what, what oh, yeah. can you remember the four subjects you've learned back then? I think it was MS two, MS three neuron cardio as well mm -hmm. and i think aging across the lifespan which kind of included peds and uh like your geriatrics population so ms2 was more of your like special tests your objective tests narrowing down like okay if you look at the shoulder complex how can you logically break down what's going on mm -hmm. and kind of break it down like an algorithm so did they get a positive in allingham did they get a negative in hawkins kennedy what yeah. kind of impingements have they got that type of stuff mm -hmm. uh, with your MS3 it was more your like first line care being able to converse with the patient, understand where they're coming from, what kind of stresses are going on in their life and give them a recovery time frame that is reasonable and realistic, but also making sure that they're on the same page with you. Mm. Um, and the cardio neuro aspect was very similar to first sem, just kind of with a bit more rules and regulations or a little bit more contraindications precautions to manage with and like op like your fancy type equipment your open suction closed suction mm. your hyperinflations um and your the aging across the lifespan was really good it showed you your jerry's population which is a ton if you go on hospital allocation so that's definitely a good takeaway for that and the peds as well peds was probably one of the more complicated ones because you can't see them just like your every day patient because mm -hmm their biology is fundamental it's very different to how your adult biology is so you have to kind of do a balancing act you have to reapply what you know from your cardio your neuro uh your, re your regular musk because depending on the development stage certain things will not apply and you just need to understand that part yeah so you enlisted five sub or well, side topics so didn't to remind me was cardio pulmonary and neurological one unit back then or i was just trying to see so you got the two ms ones you've got yep. cardio and you got uh neuro and then you had this uh across the lifespan where you mentioned peds is that was that merged what um the two uh cardio and neuro yep cardio and neuro merged so yep. the first five weeks was like cardio and then the last five weeks was neuro yeah yeah and yeah yeah i think the undergraduates did do that as well um I think it's a third year subject for them. Um, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I like how you got a nice memory of the, the subjects. So at the same time, um, I can tell you're, you haven't completely studied up on it, which is great because you actually do just remember this because uh, just, to, just to tease you here, uh, MS2 was uh, the lower back and the lower limb, which you are correct. You learned quite a lot of special tests and a very systematic way of learning things. Um, uh, in MS3, that was more focused on the neck and the shoulder, and uh, definitely first line care. I love, I love that you remember first line care, um, because it's definitely the key, one of the key messages. <laughs> oh god, that was pun. In, was that a pun? I don't know, but uh, yeah, first line care, key messages. Yeah, the big link there. But the key messages um, uh, of uh, MS3 is that first line care is important in practicing that, uh, and particularly in the context of non-specific neck pain um, or even non-specific shoulder pain. Uh, yeah, it's how you navigate um, uncertainty, actually. Like, no one mm. knows exactly what that condition is. Like, you can have a good guess, but your yeah, MRI can't tell you. The clinical tests, they can be garbage at times, um, but you have to kind of decide as a clinician um, to encourage a patient that, okay, it's most likely this. Does it really matter? Probably not, because what we can see is that if we do these things, it will work, it will get you better. Um, cool, cool. So that's that's good to, to notice that as you transitioned across, in summary, you kind of were more ready for it. Um, so uh, in other words, it was perhaps an easier semester because even the pacing was the same, but you felt uh, more prepared. Um, and yeah, you, learnt, you can see that obviously the units are designed to be a bit more, um, critical thinking or you know, putting things together so yeah and the peds P peds is always uh peds is definitely one of my weaker areas as well because um one is that i, I i'm not really uh what do you call it I'm, I'm not really like super super like chummy with 
babies and children i don't know the, the best way to put that uh, but <laughs> my, my wife will love it like you, you, you like for example we would visit a friend who has like, a newborn and she'll be like oh and like you know love to hold him or her etc and, and i'll be like <laughs> no i think i'm gonna drop him or her <laughs> stay away <laughs> what if what, what, what if they poo on me or pee on me <laughs> like that, that's so so yeah i mean everybody has what they're interested and good at um and yeah. vice versa as well so <laughs> i think we're on the same maybe on the same page with that by the sounds of your laughing with me but um cool so then you moved to um second year actually what did you do in um the mid-year break and uh, yeah i'm happy for you to just be honest and just go look if i, if I did nothing i played games i think i did that a lot <laughs> of times yeah I'll, I'll start with myself first i think i just played a lot of video games and chilled yes. in between um, what did you do yeah, I know lots of people do different things. I would say, yeah, a lot of video games, catching up with friends. I do a lot for the social. So, like, playing online games, co-op games, uh, yeah, MMOs every now and then, yep. just to, I guess, be part of another community and kind of just nice change of pace, just to stop thinking about, like, let's say, work for a little bit and kind of delve into another world temporarily hmm. um other we can talk was... about this later but yeah, yeah. but yeah no, i love it i love it yeah keep going i uh, go with other mates to like we'd go fishing early hours in the morning so some ridiculous like two three o'clock in the morning <laughs> hmm. uh doing stuff like that uh go to some of the beaches if it was during summertime that was always nice uh what else would we do those are like the main parts escape rooms as well because we really enjoy like the puzzle solving aspects and working in like teams and seeing everyone lose their mind over time a time and pressure yeah uh, you know you know like like we, we sometimes like to box like social and hobby stuff and into our work but like all the things you just described i mean like you will think oh am i contributing to my development as a clinician at all with all the stuff i do i think at mm -hmm. the time you're like well no i'm not studying anatomy so obviously i'm not but mm -hmm. really i think um like the skills you learn in escape room, the skills you've learned even with you know, software design, if we go back that far, slash mm. being able to play computer games, allow you to, you know, one, be competent in doing an interview like this in the middle of COVID um, and help you with telehealth in the future um, and all that type of stuff. So, but yeah, it's cool. Um, good to hear uh, what you've been doing. And um, obviously it's a comfort to anyone out there who's, you know, watching on i mean if you're watching this on twitch two there's two reasons one is that um you're a gamer and you somehow come across this so you probably be the type of person who's just chilling and playing games like us in our break time or two you, you know obviously found us in the facebook page or whatever and you've been forced to watch just because you really want to learn either way um you are not exactly studying but you don't have to um, there's lots of other things you can do to help with your career so um that said we've gone through semester one semester two kind of roughly what you did in the breaks um it sounds like you probably did, did the same thing in your second year breaks but uh let's jump to second year first semester what what what, what was there second year 